As women age, it's important that we stay on top of health screenings, but how do we know what to do when? Dr. Scott Ackerman is one of the first coast leading oncologists. He is joining us today to talk about important health issues such as this, and we are starting a very special women's health series here, which I'm super excited about because we're going to be talking about uh, different decades. So from the 30s to the 40s to the 50s on up, things that we should be incorporating into our health regimen to make sure that we are in tip-top shape. And we're going to start with our 30s. Okay, and, and let me ask you this. Um, what kind of questions do you do you get asked when when women come in or what kind of things have you learned specifically about women in their 30s that we need to be paying attention to? Well a lot of patients that I see ask questions about their health in general. They ask you know, as an oncologist of course they ask me about cancer screenings but they also talk about what should they do to change their health routine um, to stay healthy. And so what we're going to do today is talk about women in their 30s because there's different things uh, in each decade of life that you need to be aware of, different things that happen in life. And so, and this week we'll do women in the 30s, next week 40s, and then, as you said. Okay. So I get a lot of questions uh, for, from, so, from these women. So let's first talk, start talking about women in their 30s. Okay. So when you turn 30 and through your 30s, uh, things start to happen. You're not a kid anymore. You're a real adult now. And so your metabolism begins to slow. You start losing calcium and your, from your bones, and you get bone loss. All the great stuff. Yeah, you're going to love learning. this yeah, series, yeah, yeah. aren't you, Casey? Right. I'm hesitant, but I'm getting my notebook out. Um, so you get some cartilage deter degeneration of all those years of maybe doing exercising or running, and so your cartilage starts to deteriorate. And also in your 30s is the first sign of wrinkles oh, because great. your skin loses its elasticity. And also in your 30s, you start to, you, you start to become less fertile. Uh, you lose about 90% of your of, the, of your ovum of, the, of your eggs. 90% are lost in your 30s. Now you have lots of eggs, so it's not, all is not lost. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so, as I'm sitting here thinking, God, you're piling it on right. kind of early here, Doc. All right, but what can we do? Okay, so we went through the various things. You talked about your metabolism, bone loss, the wrinkles. Thanks so much for bringing that up. Really appreciate it. Uh, and the fertility. What can we start doing to prevent a lot of this? Because if there's something we can do proactively, I mean, we want to be doing it. Well, there's not a whole lot you can do to, to prevent, but okay. you do a lot of things to slow the aging process down. And I always advocate for diet and exercise as opposed to artificial methods such as surgeries and those sort of things. But diet and exercise, it's good to start a good exercise routine now if you haven't been exercising yet. Um, when you're in your 30s, it's a good time to start an exercise routine. Exercise will increase your metabolism, increase your energy level. Exercise in and of itself will help build your bones back because certain hormones are released when you exercise. And those hormones allow calcium to be incorporated into your bones. It allows your, muscle ma your muscles to get stronger. And you get more muscle mass, your bones get stronger. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> because, because, <laughs> you have that look, Casey. <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Because when they say exercise, I, I'm because, you know, I'm getting to the point where I just don't really like to exercise. So can I do like moderate walking or does it have to be yeah. rigorous? Does it have to be where I'm going to the gym for like 45 minutes pumping iron kind of thing? 30 minutes of exercise a day. Okay. It doesn't have to be aerobic. It can be some, you, know, you could use dumbbells and do some weight exercise. 30 a day. 30 minutes a day is a, is a good amount. And okay. you should alternate it. You, don't, you shouldn't do the same thing every day. You don't need to run every day. That's not really that healthy for you. But if you mix a little bit of aerobic with a little bit of muscle exercise, like doing dumbbells and push-ups and those sort of things, where you build muscle, that's a good mix. And building that muscle is very important long term for maintaining proper bone strength. And also incorporate certain foods in your diet. Okay. Fish reduces cartilage degeneration. Antioxidants are good for your skin to reduce the, to reduce the, um, the wrinkles. Then foods that have antioxidants in them are things like broccoli and asparagus and beans. Um, you can eat nuts for energy. And also a diet that's low in sugar and high in protein will give you a better metabolic activity. You'll feel have more energy and also will help you with weight control. Okay, so what we do eat really does make a huge difference. What about vitamin supplements? Should we be starting to incorporate that into our regimen, uh, you know, earlier than their 30s, but our 30s especially? The 30s is a good time to be sensitive to what vitamins that you need to take. Uh, vitamins are best to get through a well-rounded diet, but if you're, if you're on a diet that's not so well-rounded uh, because either you're you, you, you eat hastily, or maybe you're a vegan or a vegetarian diet, and there's nothing wrong with that. But those diets lack certain nutrients. Uh, vegetarian diets lack calcium and iron, B12, um, so you can add vitamins there. Also, if you're in your 30s, you're of childbearing age. And if you may get pregnant, um, then there are certain vitamins you should take to make sure you have a healthy baby. We recommend vitamin B. Those prenatal vitamins mm -hmm. 
a lot of doctors give, uh, prescribe prenatal vitamins to all women of childbearing age because it's most important to have those vitamins on board when in the early in the early um, months of pregnancy, uh, not later, because it's very important for neurological development of the baby. Um, but in general, women don't need to have a lot of supplements. Okay, we're kind of short on time, but we want to get through this last question because uh, what kind of screenings should women be getting in their 30s? What kind of cancer screenings, especially you being an oncologist? Well, just there's a couple of simple ones. Skin, be aware of your skin. We talk about the ABCs of skin. Do self-examination skin, look for moles and such. A breast examination, breast self-examination. You just start in your 20s, so you know what what the normal, what your, what your breasts feel like and you feel for any changes. Um, cervical cancer screenings with your, with your uh, physician every year with HPV test and also get a good baseline for your blood pressure and cholesterol levels because they'll be important later on in life. All right, Dr. Ackerman, thank you. Next week thank we'll you, be Casey. talking about the 40s and on to the 50s and 60s after that. Thank you so much. We <laughs> thank you for having you, me. you as always. Get out your notebooks. Okay, if you have any questions regarding today's topic or any other health questions that you might have, you can visit Dr. Ackerman's Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash first coast oncology. Give them a, a question. They will respond to you.